watching the world burn, watching the world burn. October 31st, 2023. Let's get into it. Now, I wanted to give you the background on this because I had a heated uh, debate with a good friend of mine. He absolutely hates Putin. I don't understand it. I, I don't know. Putin's people love him. I think he's done a good job. He definitely cares about his country, which is more than we can say for Joe Biden and our leaders. Definitely Mitch McConnell or uh, Lindsey Graham or any of the rhinos up there. But one of the things in today's video that I was, I was kind of getting to, but I didn't quite get my point out, was that world opinion is shifting away from the United States and away from uh, Israel. And so let's just take a comment from Vladimir Putin, the most hated person by my best friend. Uh, and he, he hates him with a passion, says he's a, a dictator, which 80 90% of his, his country loves him, uh, which is more than I can say for Biden. So let's, uh, let's read his comment. When you look at bloody children, dead children, how women, old people suffer, how doctors die, and fists clench, and the tears well up in your eyes, you can't say it any other way. But we shouldn't. We don't have the right to allow ourselves to be guided by emotions, which is what's happening in Israel right now uh, with their genocide of Palestine. And it's, it's going to work against them. And that's what my point was to my friend. He goes, we got to support them at all costs. I said, look, man, if they're doing things that they it's not in their own self-interest, uh, since we're giving them billions and billions of currency, we need to say something. But let's continue. We must clearly understand who is really behind the tragedy of the people of the Middle East and other regions of the world. Well, let's see. The United States uh, blew up Iraq. Uh, we blew up Afghanistan. We blew up Syria. We blew up Libya. Uh, of course, the list continues, but let's keep going because I, I have a feeling he's going to get to that. Who organized this deadly chaos? Who benefits from it? Today, this has become obvious and clear to everyone. The customers act openly and brazenly, and certainly we do at this point. It is the ruling elites, the globalists, I added the globalists, by the way, of the United States and their satellites that are the main beneficiaries of global instability. Now, you didn't probably watch Erdogan's speech. I don't have that handy. Uh, you can watch it on other YouTube channels, but uh, he went a little crazy uh, uh, and then said, well, one, I didn't, like I said in the video, you'll, you'll, I will get to that. I just wanted to get to a couple of tweets real quick. Someone tell me what happened to Ukraine. Is it still there? Who's the guy named Zelensky anyway? <laughs> hey, we, is, is Ukraine still there? I don't know. Uh, there is no doubt. Oh, well, I, I was just talking about him shadow banned on YouTube, but if you want to watch in HD, uh, the world has gone mad, my latest video. We see the Russian ships fully loaded, dispatched from Indonesia. And in the tweet, I said 300 Turkish ships. I think it's only 100. And uh, sailing who knows where from Turkey, ships from China, and over, well, I said a million protesters in Turkey. I think it was just upwards of 100 to 200,000. So anyway, that's, that's the latest tweet. So I, that's about all I got to do. Go ahead and watch the rest of the video. Enjoy the great outdoors. Let's get to it. So, uh, you know, the first thing I wanted to point out in this video, and I, I, it just amazes me to no end, was when uh, Hamas came across, nobody in Israel had any guns. <laughs> I mean, you live right next to, you're surrounded by enemies. Uh, the one thing that you would think the most of is that every citizen would have had a gun, but they know they have very, very strict gun control laws in Israel. So if I was an Israeli citizen right now, I'd be pissed, man. I'd be pissed at my government. And maybe the reason why they had those uh, really strict gun control laws was because the government didn't feel safe with the citizens being armed. Uh, so there was one story I wanted to throw this out to you because I thought it was a good story. One, one guy, he did have a gun. I guess it's really hard to get permitted. By the way, 100,000 people now in Israel have applied for gun permits. I don't know what hoops they're going to have to jump through to get those guns, but I can't believe that the government's not just handing out guns. I mean, it's just, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. 
But uh, anyway, the story goes, and I, I was reading about it on X. He told his daughter, he said, uh, I want you to hide here under the bed, and you're probably going to hear some loud noises. And uh, he says, but don't worry about it. Don't cry out. Just, just hang out here. And so when Hamas came through the front door, he blew him away. And his family survived as a result of him having a gun. So if you're a leftist uh, lunatic watching this video, I want you to think about the fact that we've got terrorist groups that have come across the uh, United States border. And at some point, I imagine they're going to weapon up, or have already weaponed up, and they're going to go door to door shooting people. And I would definitely go to a place where I know if they've got really strict gun control laws because the threat of me running into anybody uh, that's got a gun, uh, especially if they just got it, in, and that's another reason that I, if you've got kids, you got to put your guns in a the safe. There's no doubt about it. Or if you're going to have kids in the house or company coming over. But otherwise, you better have access to those guns. I mean, if it's in your safe, you know, if you could open that safe really fast and, and weapon up, that'd be fine but if somebody kicks in your front door which by the way that's something you might want to look into you can buy this stuff called door armor and any carpenter can come in and install it for you it makes it almost impossible to kick in your front door so when the fbi comes <laughs> they're gonna have a tough time getting through that front door and i even went so far as to put in coastal windows because uh, they're gonna have a hard time breaking through the windows as well so, but if that's you know, it's more about buying time. They're going to get in the house, whether it's the FBI or whoever. Uh, they're going to get in the house, but if you want to be able to buy the time to get to your weapons or whatever it is you're going to use to defend yourself, baseball bat, I wouldn't recommend that. I have a feeling they're going to be uh, weaponed up, and you're not. So that's the first uh, story that I wanted to bring out about Israel. The uh, the next one was, uh, and I was trying to point this out to my buddy. I said, look, you know, Israel went after Hamas attacked. There were lots of stories that came out. The, the one story that, that I disputed, and I have no proof uh, one way or the other, uh, was the uh, chopping the head off a baby story. And, uh, and I've seen no po photos of that. Now, maybe uh, X is uh, censoring that so that you can't see it. I just got on Telegram, but I don't know how to use it yet. I guess I bought, bought some videos about how to use it. And... Uh, I might start posting videos there also once I figure out <laughs> how to use Telegram. But anyway, uh, so maybe there were some photos on Telegram. Tell me if you saw any of them, uh, let me know. But everything that has been coming out on X says that that didn't happen. That, that was just Israeli propaganda. So, okay, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But then, you know, I wanted to point out to him... We chop the heads off of babies in the United States every single day. You can go to California and get an abortion up to the last trimester. They suck those heads right off those babies right out of the womb. And yet everybody's bitching about the fact that some Hamas, and I'm not saying that, you know, that what they, if they did do this, it's horrific crime. You know, but what I'm saying is we do it here in the United States and nobody blinks an eye about it. So that was the first you know, hypocritical thing that I could, you know, because if, you, if you're really worried about chopping the head off of babies, you know, maybe stand in front of an abortion clinic and protest. Oh, well, that's right, because then the FBI will come and arrest you for standing in front of an abortion clinic because we want abortions. Oh, yeah, so maybe you shouldn't do that because, I don't know, I wouldn't want to go to jail just for protesting outside of an abortion clinic. So, anyway, that's just me. All right, so that, that was the next story. And then there was a story that came out about the woman that the, uh, the Palestinian supposedly chopped her head off and there was a picture of her, that damn good looking woman. Uh, and, uh, and then they said, well, they found a fragment of her skull and that she had been shot in the head. Uh, and it wasn't where, you know, they were, you know, you know where they, um, they were having that party when they came across with the paragliders. That was supposedly where they chopped her head off. But they, so now that's in dispute. And everybody on X is saying, no, no, that didn't happen. That's just Israeli propaganda. So you see where all this goes. And uh, what I wanted to get back to, Israel had the upper hand. After the, uh, the military operation, you got to give them, you, you might hate your enemy, but uh, that was a hell of a military operation that they conducted. And you always wonder why in the hell was Israel so caught completely off guard like that? I don't know. I mean, that's just amazing to me. And that's another reason I'd be getting rid of Netanyahu. 
you know, he, he runs on here, oh, I'm going to protect Israel. Now he's saying he's just going to kill every freaking person in Gaza. But that, that's what I'm getting to is the point of this story. Is that, okay, they had the upper hand. They needed to go in and take care of Hamas. And the way they needed to do it was they had to go in with, in a controlled fashion. Showing the world in a slow, steady progress to get the, uh, the Hamas out of Gaza. However, you know, way they were going to do it, but they needed to do it in a fashion that didn't inflame the entire Arab world. Okay, and so, but going in and indiscriminately bombing the civilians and saying, well, you know, that's because they're being used as human shields. Okay, maybe so, I don't know. But I mean, do you know how it looks? I mean, like right now, there was a picture just today of a little girl, Palestinian, and her eyes were burnt out and there was blood all over her face. Horrific. And this is what the Arab world is seeing and this is what people are seeing. You know, they've killed, uh, good Lord, I, I bet there's 10,000 civilians that are dead right now in Israel. I dare say the Russians in, in the last year and a half probably haven't killed that many civilians in all of Ukraine. You know, and, and they did it in a week. So, I mean, and then, of course, then Turkey, I didn't need to correct something. So Turkey, uh, that was the one that really got me, was I was looking at it. I said in a video, maybe it was yesterday, I said there was a million people at the protest. Another figure that I got, it was just 100,000. But, you know, I've never seen, when you see just a sea of people for as far as the camera can, you know, to the horizon of the camera, it looked like a million people to me. I said, oh, my God. And then Erdogan comes out and basically says that Israel is an occupier. And they need to be evicted. And uh, so, and then he dispatches. And I said it was 300 ships. I, I, now I know it, supposedly it's 100 ships. But, you know, this is kind of a video of what you know and what you don't know. I didn't even know Turkey had, had 100 ships in their Navy. Did you? I mean, you know, I, was, I know that Russia had a Navy. And I knew that China's built a hell of a Navy. You know, we got a Navy. I, I think Britain might have a couple of ships. I, I'm not sure they got anything left. Uh, no, they got, I think they got one aircraft carrier, maybe. And uh, But I never knew Turkey had such a huge Navy. So that's kind of like what you know and what you don't know. And that's kind of the point of this video. The other question that I've got, getting back to uh, Ukraine for just a minute. You know, I wonder if uh, the Russian people have guns. Can somebody answer me that question? I mean, well, right now, everybody does because they're all in the military. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm wondering if the citizens, if you know, whether they have like a Second Amendment in Russia or not. I, I don't know. I mean, that is a real good question because I was contemplating that because the same thing. You know, you've got these Ukrainian hit squads, especially in the first part of the war, that were coming across into Russia. And I, so I wonder if the civilians were armed. It seemed like they, they were because the reaction against the uh, Ukrainians when they found out was pretty quick and decisive. Uh, they killed pretty much all of them on those raids. But uh, so that's a question. If you know the answer to that, does does Russia have a Second Amendment? Are now the citizens uh, armed? Because wouldn't that be in contrast to Israel, where nobody had guns? I don't know. I, it just hit me in the head today as I was thinking about it. So, uh, and then the last thing uh, I wanted to point out. You know, we are, what, a $13 trillion in debt. Now, you understand they keep saying we're sending money. We're not sending money. We're sending debt to Israel, our debt, okay? You're not sending uh, our, you know, we're sending debt to Ukraine. And, you know, I'm a, I'm, I went ahead and joined our country, our choice. This is our country. I don't give a crap about Ukraine. I mean, I, I care about Israel, but I, we don't have the wherewithal or the money to, or the money there's no money all we have is currency to help them out anymore they need to fight on their own okay maybe we can send them some weapons all right and do what you can and here's another little factoid for you that you probably didn't understand did you know that israel is not our ally because i hear everybody on the radio saying our ally israel our ally israel there's no ally there's no reciprocal agreement if the united states comes under attack Israel said they are not going to come to our defense. So what kind of ally is that? See, an ally means that you have a reciprocal defense agreement. So if somebody attacks Israel, we'll come to their defense. And if somebody attacks the United States, Israel will come to our defense. 
Hell no. Israel ain't coming to the help of the United States. They couldn't give a shit. Okay, the only thing they want is our weapons and our currency, if you want to call it that. Which we can't afford to give them. So I hope you're getting your jack strap on, because we're heading for a major financial crisis. And then what's Israel going to do? Because there ain't going to be no more currency flowing out of the United States. We won't even have anything. And all these people with pensions and Social Security and getting Medicare. What are you going to do when your dollar ain't worth nothing? What are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I mean, I'm, I've kind of tried to prepare as best I could, but that's almost impossible to prepare for. I was in Brazil when they had the hyperinflation. And those poor guys, because you know, luckily I was getting paid at that time in U.S. dollars, but the guys that were getting paid in the, uh, I think it's the Real in, Great, in uh, Brazil, but they would all line up at the door and they would hand out the paychecks and they'd all sit there and as soon as the alarm went off, and the door was like letting people out of prison and they would all run to their cars as fast as they could. Because guess what? Their currency was devaluing by the second. And they would all rush to the stores like madmen. You should see that parking lot. It looked like Mario Andretti. Indianapolis 500. All the cars just taken off out of the lot. And they would go to the stores as quick as they could. Because the next day, they wouldn't be able to buy anything. That's what hyperinflation is. So I hope you're getting prepared for it. Because I do believe we are heading for that. Especially when you got a Congress that's saying, Well, let's send another $14 billion in debt. To, uh, to Israel. Let's send another hundred billion dollars to uh, Ukraine. You know, and, and by the way, the money, the, the currency, I keep calling it money, the, the debt that we're sending to Ukraine ain't gonna do no damn good. They need weapons and they need people to fight. Are we gonna send in the Marines with, with the, uh, our weapons? That's the only way you're gonna make a difference and, and even that wouldn't help without air support. So uh, Ukraine is screwed. I hope you understand that. they. They're done. They need to go to the peace table and save what they can of, the, of their people. And I did, I've did. i predicted, I've told, told you time and time again, it's not 500,000 dead. I think we're looking at a million dead Ukrainians and may, probably more in casualties, maybe upwards of 1 million to 2 million casualties. Okay, the ca casualties being including the dead. Can you imagine in a country that had, I think it was like 35 million to begin with? They, they're, for generations, they're not going to have any children. And then, of course, that doesn't even take into account all the people that fled Ukraine. And, of course, that's exactly what we're seeing in Israel. I heard a report that uh, they, I don't know, it was one of the officers. He went somewhere, and I want to say it was the West Bank, but might not have, northern, I think it was northern Israel. Everything's abandoned. All the people have left because they don't want to be there for the war. Where they went, I mean, I guess they, you know, a lot of people have two uh, country citizenships. They probably got the hell out of the country. So Israel's going to be hurting for manpower because all the people that have citizenship in the United States, they're not staying and fighting. That, that means, guess how much they care about Israel. They want to get the hell out of the way. All right, that's it for this video. Just wanted to talk in video, just some thoughts that pop into my head from time to time, and I just want to talk about it. But the abortion versus chopping the heads off the babies, the woman that was beheaded, the uh, currency issue where we're heading into financial disaster. You know, what happened to America first, people? We need to take care of our own. Have you looked at the homeless on the streets? Have you seen the fentanyl? Hundreds of thousands of people dying. And we're going to send money to Israel and Ukraine. Not, God dang, it's not money, currency. Does that make any sense to you? We can't even take care of our own country. We can't even close our own border, for goodness sake. I tell you, it's just, uh, our, our whole Congress is just messed up. And uh, they got their priorities way wrong. I say our priorities are America first. Peace out. Stay free. Yeah, now, going uh -huh. to, to the war in Ukraine, I've heard you recently say that, I think it was to the effect of, uh, you're concerned that perhaps Russia's slow approach to this could make this conflict a more dragged out uh, hot war between America and and Russia. Is that correct? Did I, did I, is yeah, that correct? I, I'm concerned because people have been misled from day one about the Russians. Putin, at the beginning of this uh, debacle, moved into Ukraine with a very small force, about 90,000. And this force 
suddenly encountered a Ukrainian army that we had built up over the previous six, seven years with the express purpose of fighting and destroying Russia. Uh, and he, he thought that he was sending a signal to the West that had not paid any attention to him that the Russians are serious about their security and they would not tolerate a NATO presence on their border. And they most of all were concerned about our willingness to put missiles into Eastern Ukraine as the Soviets did in uh, Cuba in, in the 1960s that would threaten their cities and threaten their nuclear deterrent. And there's a lot of evidence that we were absolutely prepared to do that. And that's what the Ukrainian force and the state were being built up to support. He discovered that uh, he had no negotiating partners, but he dragged this out through March and April and finally said, well, that's it. I guess no one's going to negotiate with us. We're in a different, different set of circumstances. He did not, I think, expect the reckless hatred uh, that grips Washington and their globalist uh, allies in Western Europe. And as a result, he said, We're, this is a game changer. We've got to go back, re-examine things. And then the, the Russian military buildup began. And today you have over 750,000 troops. There, there are plans to go up to 1.2 million. They may well reach that by the uh, beginning of the next year. Is that total course, or you mean deployed into Ukraine? No, total. Total. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but but the 750,000 right now are around Ukraine or in it. Uh -huh. And that force is enormous and it's extremely well equipped, heavily, heavily armed. And by the way, very competent and very well led, contrary to what everybody says. They've inflicted devastating casualties. It's more than 400,000 dead Ukrainian soldiers now. How many casualties on the Ukrainian side, anybody knows. But when you look at the Russian side, you're looking at perhaps 30, 40,000 killed, maybe another 30, 40,000 wounded. And most of the Russian wounded is treated and returns to the battlefield to fight. Whereas most of the wounded in Ukraine are so severe, they'll never come back to combat. So now they're trying to basically force whatever they can find inside Ukraine into uniform to go jump, jump into the meat grinder that's killing thousands of Ukrainians every week. And they're, they're trying to get the Polish government to assist them in repatriating anywhere between 80 and 100,000 Ukrainian young men to come back and fight. Of course, that's not going to happen. There are all sorts of legal reasons why that won't happen. Because remember, you had 14 million people at least move west and leave Ukraine. So th this, this organization we call a government, this Zelensky crowd, is really weak. And they are devastated. And they're on their last legs. So what, what sustains them? Us. Yeah. We're, we're transferring billions in cash. We own the government. We pay for the government. We pay for the military. The whole place would fold, fold and die tomorrow morning if we suspended the aid. Now, the aid that they do need is medical. The aid they need is humanitarian. They don't need any military aid. This needs to stop. We need to suspend that. It's just killing more and more Ukrainians. Now, here's it, the Russians controlling 90% of the territory where the Russian population lived in eastern Ukraine that they were trying to protect. So they've got that, and they've been sitting on it, defending it. And I think there's a lot of frustration in the senior ranks of the Russian military, because I think the Russian military has been saying for months now, Let, let's attack and get this over with. We can, we can crush this problem once and for all. And he's been reluctant to do that for two reasons. Number one, he really doesn't want to kill any more Ukrainians. We find that hard to believe, but he sees them as Orthodox Christian Slavs, just like the Russians. Secondly, he doesn't want the United States and NATO to intervene in Western Ukraine. So he's taken the position that let's move deliberately and incrementally to avoid a sudden impulsive move from Washington that would put them at war with us in Russia. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna 
Cut you down.